Hello, and welcome in this 10 minutes game dev tips. Today we are going to learn how useful quaternions are when making games. This video is not going to show you strict mathematical derivations, but if you want to know more about that, you can take a look at the different links that I've shared in the video description. My goal is that at the end of this video, you will have a good intuition on how they work and how to use them properly in your game projects. The first thing you need to know is that quaternions are a way to represent orientations in 3D space, but it's not the only approach. Indeed, there is another very famous and easier way to orient objects called Euler angles. However, quaternions solve issues that we have when using Euler angles. So let's get started by first understanding Euler angles and why they can be tricky to manage rotations in games. The idea is that we decompose the orientation of our object using three axes, X, Y, and Z. It means that a rotation around the X-axis will rotate the object on the Y-Z plane. Same for a Y rotation that will lead the object to rotate on the X-Z plane. Finally, our Z rotation will make the object rotate on the XY plane. You can see the pattern here. The object rotates on the plane formed by the two other axes. Now imagine having a screwdriver aligned with the axis that you are going to rotate around. When turning the tool, your screw is constrained to turn with it. By combining different values on different axes, we can orient our object in any direction that we want. Before continuing, let me explain the difference between a rotation and an orientation. They are often confused. An orientation is the word describing where the object is pointing at. And the rotation is the act of changing the object's orientation. Now I'm going to show you an issue that we have using Euler angles. Because of the decomposition of the rotation using those three axes, the order of rotation will affect the final orientation of our object. For instance, rotating first around Y, then X, could lead to a different orientation than first rotating around X, then Y with the same values. It means that the order of rotation the game engine or Blender is using for Euler angles matters. Another issue related to the order of rotation is what we call gimbal lock. The idea is that depending on the order of rotation and which axis you rotate around, you can put the object in a state where two axes represent the same rotation, meaning that you have lost some potential orientations in 3D space. Let's see gimbal lock in action. I have an object that is the child of the blue circle, that is the child of the red circle and that is the child of the green circle. Meaning that when I'm rotating the blue circle, the object will follow. When I'm rotating the red one, the blue circle will follow. Therefore, the object will follow. And finally, when I'm rotating the green one, you will see that the red one will follow. Therefore, by inheritance, the blue and the object will follow too. In order to show gimbal lock, we can select the inner circle, the red one, and we can rotate it by 90 degrees. And as you can see, the blue and the green circle are now representing the same rotation, meaning that if I'm rotating the blue axis or the green one, they both represent a rotation around the same axis. Wouldn't it be great if we had a system that giving the same inputs leads always to the same orientation? Like, if every possible orientation in 3D space were mapped to the same entry point. Now guess what? Quaternions are there to the rescue. Quaternions are represented by four numbers usually called XYZW. One thing that you should understand is that the XYZ part isn't representing an axis. All those values have the same importance in the representation of the quaternion. So W is as important as X, for instance. 
The way we can see a quaternion is by visualizing those four values or components as four independent orientations. A value of 1 will give 100% weight to the orientation that this value represents. And you guessed it, a value of 0 will give 0% weight to this orientation. And now, imagine that you can combine those four distinct orientations together. For instance, 50% of x and 50% of w. You can see that the result gives us a perfect mix of those two orientations. And there is no other way to result in that specific orientation. On top of that, if we add a minus sign on one of those two components, you can see that it represents the opposite orientation. One thing to note is that quaternions are often being normalized behind the scenes, by your engine or by Blender, for instance. Normalizing exists because you want to represent this 4D rotation back to a 3D rotation because in the end we live in a 3D world and we want to see a 3D rotation. A normalized quaternion is called a unit quaternion. Like with vectors, we compute a unit quaternion by dividing each component by its length. And because of numerical precision, it is always recommended to often normalize your quaternions, which again you won't have to do in many engines. So now let's look at some useful things that we can do with quaternions in Unity. Slurping for spherical linear interpolation is a way to interpolate between two quaternions. Think of the following. You have two orientations, defined by two quaternions, and you want to create a new orientation that represents a certain percentage of the two. This is really useful in order to create a smooth rotation between two orientations, by simply calling the slurp method over time. Let's look at an example. In this case, we have two arrows with two distinct orientations. A third one is going to orient itself according to the slurp parameters that are the red and blue arrows quaternions and the t value. A value of 0 for t aligns the white arrow to the red one and a value of 1 aligns the white arrow to the blue one. And in between values for t represents a mix of the two orientations. For instance, a 0.5 value represents a 50% mix of the blue and the red arrows orientation. Another useful tool is the loop rotation method from Unity. It creates a quaternion that, when assigned to a transform, aligns the forward direction of this transform to a specified vector. Here you can see the white arrows forward vector matching the red one. In Unity and in many other engines, you can also create a quaternion from a Euler angle. I'm now going to show you a useful function called FromToRotation that creates a quaternion according to two vectors. Let's see that in action. Here, we raycast in the down direction of the arrow. If we hit something, we align the up direction of the arrow with the normal using the FromToRotation function. You can also take the opposite orientation by taking the inverse of a quaternion. One final powerful thing that you can do with quaternions is multiplying them together and also multiplying them with vectors. Multiplying a quaternion with another one means visually adding the orientations. Multiplying a quaternion by a vector means rotating this vector by this quaternion. As you can see here, we are rotating the position vector of the transform by a quaternion vector multiplication. The cool thing is that you can chain multiplications and it will work as expected. That's all for this video. I hope it was useful for you and that you now have a better understanding of quaternions. There are a ton of things that I didn't explain here, but 
be sure to take a look at the different resources that I've put in the video description below. Finally, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos of this kind. See you later! Thank you.